How can we hear the exquisite tone of it if we can't see it? LOL. Hmm, that's a damn good question. The other question that should go alongside that is, is that tone wood actually going to translate onto a record that you want to sell to people? I mean, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. What a great observation. So much fun! Hey everybody, how's it going? So a little late getting into this episode, just a little weekly recap here, see what's going on. I unfortunately got a really nasty head cold at the beginning of the week and I uh, was out of commission for a few days and just wasn't in any kind of shape to shoot. Uh, definitely feeling a lot better right now, so that's cool. Uh, and then I got into this deep dive on mixing on the console and it was like, ooh, I'm actually having fun with this for a change. Oh, I remember that one recording used to be fun. I got a big episode gonna be coming up on this, gonna shoot out some some of my best digital mixes versus mixing on the console. It's going to be a blind test because I know how much you guys love those and um, show you guys the differences and let you pick out what you think sounds best. Definitely going to be an episode you're not going to want to miss, that's for sure. i uh, got some other really cool stuff I'm working on as well. Uh, I had a couple of really big breakthroughs in terms of guitar tone that I can't wait to share with you guys. And I want to show you guys my methodology and how I achieved that, especially after struggling for so many years. It, things are finally starting to come together. So that's all cool. Now, one of the things I absolutely love about doing this show is the fact I get to do these Q&A things every single week. And we've been doing them for ooh, almost 10 years now. Now. And uh, it doesn't seem to be slowing down at any particular time soon. So uh, let's just keep doing them. Let's get into your comments and questions right now. 708, I won't say Glenn is flat out wrong, but I do think there are things that Tess can't explain. When Nuno says that paint changes the tone of a sonal body electric guitar, it's because he really is hearing something. <laughs> He's really hearing something. Okay, great. You can't pull out scientific tests and gadgets and disprove him. It's psychoacoustics combined with electric signal. <laughs> gets weird. Not sure how much you can really do about it. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just read that? Did you actually write that out in plain English? <laughs> you can't pull out scientific tests and gadgets and disprove him. I don't have to. He didn't present any f***ing evidence. I gotta go back to Christopher Hitchens here. That which can be claimed without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. It doesn't matter who it's coming from. We're talking about logical fallacies here. The appeal to experts. It's bull****. It doesn't matter if Nuno says it. It doesn't matter if some kid down the street says it. It's still the same thing. Oh, taking the paint off the guitar affects the tone of the guitar. Bull fucking shit it does. Look, I get it. Nuno's an amazing fucking guitar player, but just because he says something like that doesn't make it true. It just makes it really fucking stupid. I gotta call bullshit when I see it. If Nuno says that it's affecting the tone of his guitar, then he can show us some AB recordings, he can show us some frequency response graphs, he can back up his claims with actual fucking evidence, and he has presented absolutely none. So I say, Nuno, love you, but seriously, cut the bullshit, man. You're not doing anyone any favors. I mean, seriously, it's the exact same kind of nonsense that mediums and spiritual type people use as well. Oh, I can hear from the spirit world. Listen to me. I can. Pay. It's the exact same kind of fucking nonsense. Tim Mitchin said, every mystery ever solved has been proven to be one thing, not magic. Keep that in mind next time some guitar celebrity says something monumentally fucking stupid like that. Guitarists, I prefer listening to music on my high-end sound system instead of headphones because my cheap Bluetooth earbuds sound like crap. Also, guitarists, why would speakers in my guitar cab matter? Well, now, nobody's ever made the observations that musicians are particularly intelligent, so at least there's that. Yeah, these are the same guitarists that would come into my studio and insist on recording a Line 6 Spider with the actual combo speaker because it's their sound, man. Wow, recording musicians is so much fun! The reality is that most humbucker pickups sound a lot like humbucker pickups. No matter what guitar shape they're in, even if they're in varying materials used in their construction, if the pickups are made to a reasonable standard, then they're going to be vaguely resemble that standard, including that humbucker type tone. Nobody should be surprised at all that humbucker equipped guitars sound like humbucker equipped guitars. You were expecting maybe strat tones out of an SG? Lol. Turboy 65, dude, wow. What a great observation, you know. That is absolutely phenomenal. You, you just hit the nail on the head right there. I even did an interview there with Andy the Guitar Geek and one of the heads of Ibanez Europe last year where we did a podcast and we were talking about guitars and whatnot. And Dan from Ibanez is like, oh, what pickups are on? I'm like, humbuckers. And they, they looked at me like I was from Mars. It's like, dude, we make way too much of a big deal about pickups and how a particular guitar sounds where 
is if you're actually recording these things, you realize that the differences are about that big. And the, the thing is though, I'm not trying to rub people's nose and okay, maybe I am just a little, but the point is, I'm trying to give you guys the tools and the knowledge you need to make better recordings. So you guys can focus on the things that are going to make a bigger difference and help you achieve the sound that you ultimately are looking for. And chances are dropping a whole bunch of money into new pickups isn't really going to get you there. I find it hard to believe you think the pickups don't matter. Well, of course they matter. If your guitar doesn't have any pickups, you're gonna have a hard time recording them. But when it comes to humbucker versus humbucker, the differences aren't anywhere near as big as the marketing makes it out to be. Just keep that in mind before you spend your money. Look, Beef Supreme 8, I've done test after test after test. I've done blind tests, I've done visual tests, shown you guys all kinds of different ways how pickups really don't make that big of a change in your guitar tone. And the only thing I can do is give you guys the evidence. What you choose to do with that evidence is ultimately up to you. And the fact that you say it, you find it hard to believe that I think that pickups don't matter really tells you everything I need to know that you might just be one stubborn son of a bitch. Ultimately, it's your money. You can spend it how you choose. I just hope you choose wisely. Putting Gibson in the thumbnail is so exciting. Hey, Oliver, nice ES-335 in your thumbnail. Apparently this channel has no other purpose anymore than to keep with a shtick of beating a dead horse with the same three, four subjects again and again and again and again. It would seem the clickbait controversy stirring would have gotten old by now, but no. Hey, Constantine, thanks so much for writing in. I really do appreciate that and letting your feelings be known. Always great to hear from the viewers, good and bad. Now, I have been doing the whole pickups and speakers thing, mainly because guitar players just refuse to acknowledge evidence. And I'm hoping by doing more and more content like this, you guys might finally get it through your big, thick, stupid fucking heads. Some of you guys are just a little bit more stubborn than others, but hey, science always wins in the end. Now, on the subject of doing the same thing over and over again, I noticed you didn't have any comments on the acoustic miking tutorial I did with Berth. I did that when I was in Vienna. That just came out uh, a few weeks ago. Had a lot of fun doing that. A lot of great information on there. You might have wanted to watch that one. You might have learned something. And also, I just had another video come out last week that's just doing great. And that is how to get your guitars to work in the context of a mix. I take you guys on a little journey and show you some cool tricks and tips to help you get your guitars dialed in to work better with drums and bass. Once again, didn't see any of your comments on that video, so I don't know. Maybe try watching the fucking show before commenting. Oh, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. No, I'm not, you stupid fuck. Try paying attention! Ugh. Remember all you home studio guys who want to record bands? This is going to be your client base. Ain't this a fun job? Glenn! You do a lot of modern metal sounding demos. Can you please do some mixes that sound like old Motorhead, Exciter, Venom, and Slayer? This would really help us guys that like that classic heavy metal sound for making decisions on your gear reviews. Yeah, actually, I think I can. I've got a buddy of mine uh, down in Tampa. His name's Eric T. Great guy. He's definitely an old school metal guy if there ever was one. Hopefully, I'm going to get him on the show a little bit more and we can do some more uh, thrashy type stuff. Might be a lot of fun. Thanks for the suggestion, man. And by the way, Agent Steel, really? Were you in the band or uh, were you just a fan? Uh, do you have one of those jumpsuits? Maybe? I actually just had lunch with James Murphy when I was down on the floor there uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, as I recall, James was actually in the band Agent Steel, and he absolutely loved playing in those jumpsuits. Hey, Glenn, I know you say pickups won't, won't massively improve your tone or be a magic fix, but I was wondering if a cheap pickup upgrade can worsen the tone. I bought a cheap Chinese knockoff with fake EMGs, and I'm looking to upgrade to some decent EMGs. I'm looking at that set, but I don't want to fuck up any tips. Well, ask yourself this. Are the pickups giving you good output, and are they feeding back? Because if they're giving you a lot of output and they're not feeding back, then your pickups are absolutely fine. Save your money, invest in something that's going to improve your tone, like better speakers. Okay, now I'm gonna break in here. Um, I wanna just get some feedback here. A few of you guys were nice enough to write in because a few weeks ago I asked, those of you who went to recording school, were you actually able to find employment in the field? And I got a couple of uh, very different opinions here and I thought this was really cool and be something worth sharing with you. Especially if you're considering dropping money on recording school. I went to Full Sail and got a job in three different music studios fairly soon after, and now I work in live broadcast. 
Hey Jordan, that's really cool. I'm glad you found some employment. You didn't really say what kind of job you got at those studios and how long they lasted, but it's cool you're working in broadcast. Good for you, man. I'm glad you've got a career. Hopefully one day you'll be able to pay off your student loan. Good luck with that. Don't know if you'll be able to afford rent though. My niece trained to be sound engineer at college. When she left, she couldn't get a job because she has no experience and nobody wants to take on college graduates and give them the experience. I faced the same issue when I trained in IT. All these arsehole employers who keep complaining there's a labor shortage need to start giving graduates a chance to prove their worth without demanding they work for free. And that is all an internship is, working for free. Nobody should be doing that. There is no labor shortage. There is an unwillingness from employers to pay people for work done. Couldn't said it better myself, man. That's spot on. For those of us who cannot afford a Neve console, but would still like to have a control surface for our DAW, what would you suggest? Okay, this is gonna be the subject of a bigger video coming down the road. Again, it's gonna be the whole analog versus uh, digital mixing platform kind of thing. A source close to me had a really interesting point that an owner of a major studio said he would much rather go through a dirt cheap Mackie console and mix on that rather than just digitally straight through a DAW. I thought that was very interesting and uh, I'm gonna be following up on that. So I don't know if you should be getting a control surface or you should be taking a look at a couple of different consoles. And the great thing is you don't have to spend, you know, 100 grand on a freaking Neve console. You can go get some really great stuff for not a lot of money. Case in point, I mean like, yeah, there's a lot of those old Mackie 24 channel did eight bus consoles that aren't digital they are analog and uh will definitely give you a little bit of character and those might be a lot of fun to work on and you can usually find those for like four or five hundred bucks they're not really too much money my friend bill eshram down in florida he's mixing on a yamaha pm 4000 and like anvil had, and john oliva had done some records through that console uh, those are going for like three four thousand bucks you know they're not super expensive and they've got very good eqs they were made in the early 80s there's a bunch of them kicking around and you might have to do a little work get out a can of deoxid and you know clean up all the pots and whatnot but uh, you can definitely get some damn fine results with one of those warren had mentioned he had started out with an amic tac scorpion and those aren't massively expensive either and if you can come across one of those they're a very good platform to mix on as well analog consoles definitely have a certain character and they definitely have a different kind of workflow and i've spent you know the first four or five days this week doing a very complicated mix that i was dreading doing and instead of getting one cool mix i actually did like four or five variants on it just as i'm kind of feeling out the board and seeing what works and what doesn't and um, all the results have been pretty damn spectacular and uh, that's gonna be coming up on another episode real soon and i'm gonna show you guys a very cool mixing technique and tracking technique that um i you know, used on this song in particular and it really made everything just kind of gel together really well cool stuff indeed um it's the choir style of tracking i'll show you what that's all about it's all about distance from the microphone really cool episode and if you want to get into some more in-depth type of mixing it's definitely going to be one you're not going to want to miss and as always remember only about half of you guys who watch the show are actually subscribed so if you could do me the favor if you haven't already hit the subscribe button it would really mean the world to me and um, i can grow this thing and hopefully help more people make better records hey glenn what's your go-to gear when traveling windows pc with reaper or mac with pro tools anything else once again, that's going to be an upcoming episode. I am working with a MacBook Air and Reaper, but I'm going to show you guys what I'm using for monitoring, what plugins I'm using, and just basically how I can get things done from, you know, a train car or a hotel room if I need to while I'm on the road out there getting content for you guys. Uh, once again, make sure you subscribe. Silly question here occurs. On the guitars, you keep stressing the context of the mix. I mean, in a recent video, we established that guitars sound awesome and the mix can sound like garbage when soloed out. Does the same apply to the drums and or individual drums? No, I, this is the thing. Bad sounding drums are just gonna sound bad regardless. Generally, you wanna get the drums to sound as best you can before you even put a microphone on them. That usually means new skins and proper tuning. And once you got that, you've got a great foundation to work off. Again, the drums are your bedrock, so that's kinda why we wanna record them first. We wanna get a great big slamming drum sound and then have the other instruments blend in around that drum sound. Not the other way around. Every time I've done that, the guitars just usually wind up sounding weird and the drums don't quite work. So rhythm section first, then guitars. Try that, just get the rhythm section to sound as good as you possibly can from the get-go. Damn, Glenn, you've grown a lot in the last couple of years. I love this informal style and approach. You have this quite professional confidence that is reassuring, a pro at work. Lots of good information here. Stuff like this is the beacon of light in a river of shit. 
Dude, thanks so much for writing in. It's so great to get some positive feedback for a change. I really do appreciate it. I'm really grateful, actually. For those of you guys wondering, he's referencing the why your guitars sound like shit in a mix video. I'll have a link to that at the end of this one. It's a really cool deep dive. And once again, kind of explains how to get things working in your mix. All right, that's it for this episode. And before I go, I just want to say, don't forget we've got Element Bass available over at Spectre Digital. It's the best damn bass plugin I have ever come across. Unfortunately, it's uh, what we're putting out there. And yes, it does sound absolutely fucking killer. It'll get your results just like this. And that's all based off my three stage preset. We've all got it down to just basically three knobs. Uh, what's more, we've got the new version out. It's working with Pro Tools on Mac and PC. We've got our login issues, I think mostly mostly uh, fixed, that's for sure. We're a small company, you know, there is a little bit of uh, bugginess in the development and whatnot, but I think we've got things pretty much figured out on this one. So if you're curious, go check it out over at spectredigital.com. It's things like that that allow me to fund the show and keep my editors employed as well. Thank you very much for the awesome job on this, Ziz. You fucking rule, buddy. So run out over to Spectre Digital, grab yourself a copy, and find out why the bass is so important in your mixes and how it will help you get the proper foundation for a great, heavy guitar sound. All right, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thank you so very much for all your comments. I love hearing from you guys. Don't be afraid to share your opinions. It's always a great subject for conversation. Anyway. Have a wonderful weekend, stay safe, and I'll see you next week. Take care. The reality is that most humbucker pick... Yeah. Anyway, this shows up... Anyway. Your guitar doesn't have any hit pick... Yeah. <laughs> Won't massively improve your... T yeah. The reality is that most humbucker pick... Humbucker pick... Okay. And...